Canada, um, over the last two or three years, has had a tremendous rebound. 2016 was almost record-breaking across the board. So overall, and I'll use this in perspective, overall we saw an 11% increase in visitation to Canada, and we saw a 17% increase from the UK. Uh, and again, in perspective, if global growth is about 3.84%, those are very strong numbers. Um, there is a great deal of uh, history in that relationship. I mean, I'm not just talking about the, the long-term political history, but uh, in the relationship between the travel trade and the Canadian industry that is starting to bear significant fruit. Um, there are, uh, there's a great deal of dedicated work we've been doing with the travel trade over, over the years here in the UK. Uh, so we were uh, almost surprised by how strong 2016 was, uh, but we have a fairly, uh, um, uh, we're on track to have another significantly important year for 2017 as well. And you know, spending the last, uh, the last few days uh, in the market talking to travel trade, uh, seeing even how the early bookings are, are, are moving through the system, uh, we have uh, officially set a target of 5% increase for next year. But I think that's fairly conservative. I think we're going to do we're going to do better than that. The shift in the marketing, both in direct to consumer, our direct our direct to consumer approach, and our travel trade approach, and our media approach have been refreshed, uh, where we're doing what we call digital storytelling marketing uh, on a much more personal basis. So less large and epic. This is Canada, big and beautiful Canada. More direct storytelling about what you can actually do, or the customer can actually do in market. That's number one. Number two, um, and I think they go hand in hand, that demand stimulation has mean a lot more seats into the market. So air access has gone up uh, dramatically uh, from all the carriers, but the introduction of WestJet has been important as well. So I think WestJet brought a quarter of a million extra seats into the market. So that brings competition, brings down the, the, the price of the destination, or at least the travel, uh, the travel element. So that's important. Um, I think the... the tenacity of the UK market specifically. I think it, it, it's done relatively well against other uh, markets, at least uh, uh, in Europe. And, you know, then there's a sort of basket of the currency is a nice thing, but again, against the, 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 the UK pound, it's not as significant as maybe other destinations. I just think there's a, there is a spirit uh, where we have been trying to cultivate for the last couple of years this notion that Canada is not cold, it's cool. And there is a, a, a revived essence of Canada, not just in this market, but in others. Um, some of it relating to the geopolitical realities right now. And just, it's, it's been on everybody's bucket list for a long time as a destination. Uh, but I think our marketing efforts have created a sense of urgency as to why now. And then lastly, underneath all that is a slightly younger customer. Yes, the baby boomers uh, from uh, the UK and other markets are still the main bread and brother, butter, but we're starting to see a younger millennial audience that is responding, especially to the digital campaigns. Um, and now that air prices are fairly competitive, you know, you can do short stop Canada trips uh, that are far more attractive to that demographic. So I think if you take all of those, and uh, I know it sounds like a disparate mm -hmm. uh, a series of things, but I think. I refer to them as the layers of the club sandwich. They, 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 they all come together. And you know, we're, we're a fairly desirable place right now. I'm sure the travel trade are aware the, of the Canadian Signature Experiences Program, which where some years ago we went out and identified not destinations or uh, uh, specific things, but experiences that were export ready that, that, that international consumers would be interested in. Um, that was part of, uh, or that was the formulation of the program. The next step uh, in finding that distinctiveness are what we call the passion plays, whether it's culinary or music or uh, cultural issues. Uh, and in within that, uh, we've actually spent a fair amount of time focusing on Aboriginal tourism. Very authentic Aboriginal experiences in Canada, which again distinguishes us uh, a little bit from uh, both our US uh, counterparts and a lot of other destinations. And in fact, this year at Rendezvous Canada, we're going to have a pavilion of about 35 Aboriginal entrepreneurs who are export ready and uh, um, are really delivering a very different value proposition. So some of it is a mix of product. Some of it, as we discussed earlier, um, you know, through the recession and through a period of when the Canadian dollar and the US dollar was at par, I think the, 
Um, you know, we washed out some of the less competitive product in Canada, so what's, what remains is actually quite strong. Um, and I think that's a very good value proposition for not just the traveler, but for travel trade professionals who are selling Canada. Canadians are not, by our nature, very jingoistic, so uh, the, the 150th anniversary is more of a celebration of celebrations. And Ottawa's a very good example, Montreal's a very good example, but the, it's really a series of special events that are tied to 150 that are going to be brought to the fore that again create that sense of urgency or why should I travel to Canada this year. Um, and I'll be honest, uh, you know, it's not, we, we don't want just to be about July the 1st, which is Canada's birthday. We want it to be a year-long celebration, which has already built, begun. The second thing, which is a great incentive, is uh, Parks Canada has made park, uh, National Park Access free this year. Not just to Canadians, but to anyone. And we can see the uptake, because you have to file online to get uh, your park pass. Um, that uptake is really tremendous, and uh, um, I don't have early numbers yet, but I've, anecdotally we know that there's a, a lot of international interest in that as well. So that's going to drive a fair amount of traffic, not just to the main national parks like Banff that are, are well known, uh, but to other heritage sites and, and, and national parks. So I guess it's a melange, if you will, of sort of special events and, 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 and activities that each of our city partners, many of our city partners, are putting in the front window. I'd prefer to say that the openness that we are projecting as Canada does have an effect. Um, and it has an effect with our European clientele, our Asian clientele, and specifically our, our Central and South American, and particularly the Mexican clientele. Obviously, um, the removal of the visa with Mexico on December the 1st is a huge opportunity for us. But we were already seeing significant double-digit growth from the Mexican market before that. So, um, you know, I love to credit my boss, and it's, it's a, a lot easier to sell Canada with a, a, a globally acknowledged prime minister uh, uh, like Trudeau. Uh, but I also think it's bigger than that. I think there's a, there's, there's a sense of who we are as a country, how accepting we are, how diverse we are. And that is a far more welcoming message than we're seeing in a lot of other destinations around the world. So that's the that, that's l'esprit that we are trying to convey. Um, and as for what's going on south of the border, it's probably too early to tell. Uh, and I don't want to speculate, uh, but I believe that our approach has been one of openness, diversity, acceptance, welcoming. Uh, which I think is resonating. Canada is open from a space perspective. Canada is open from uh, an acceptance perspective. Canada is open from a philosophical perspective. We're, o we're a very open place. Um, and in a world that seems to be closing, um, it is the one place where whether you're looking at you know, physically, spiritually, uh, uh, intellectually, uh, it's a very open concept. And you know, our, our travel industry is open for business. So we have, uh, we have spent the last three or four years, in fact, getting ourselves ready for this sort of per perfect set of circumstances. And I think that it's an important part of the value proposition.